Hey, you gotta come and check this out. You won't believe what I've got to show you today. Ibanez has sent the YY20 to check out on the channel. Check out the glittery sparkles on this one. Really cool, right? Um, do you remember whose model this is? Well, this is Yvette Young. This is her second signature model. This is the YY20. The YY10 was a slime green color, maple neck, and a strat configuration a set of picks, pickups in that one. This one largely differs different color, telecaster pickup configuration, and we've got, um, well, because you can see there's a rosewood neck on this one. So I've had this guitar for two weeks, and um, I've really bonded with it on that journey. But there is one thing that I really, really do not like about this guitar, and I want you to try and guess what that is. I'm going to let you know at the end, and I want you to let me know if you guessed correctly. And it's going to be become hopefully obvious as we go through this video together today. So I wanted you to be part of this experience. So I reached out on Instagram and on YouTube community and I asked you, uh, what questions do you have about this guitar? So thank you for those who submitted. We're gonna go through some of your questions today. But first, I wanna give a quick general overview of the guitar specs and then we'll get into those questions. I'm sure you are very much like me. When you get a new guitar, you try to justify, was it worth the price? So I'll go over the features looking at it through that scope. If we start at the top, we've got Goto locking tuners, these are wonderful. I guess they're not that cheap, they're made in Japan and um, great for all the different tuning changes that you'll need to make with this guitar. Next up we have this highly polished bow nut, which is really high quality. I had the YY10 in the past and on that one it was not cut so well, uh, but this is a much better example on this guitar. Next we have a rosewood fretboard. Again, it's not dry, it's really well oiled by the looks of it. So if we move on to the, the body, it's made from Alder. Um, this one, I'm happy to say, is really, really lightweight, so I was really happy with that. And not so light that you're going to get neck dive, it's just perfectly balanced in my opinion. Pickups, you've got two Seymour Duncan pickups here, so again, that's a nice upgrade. And then you just got your usual, well, Telecaster kind of configuration, a three-way switch. Um, feels quite cheap, to be honest. You get one volume and one tone knob. And you get this nice, what would, what would be the domed... Um, jack plate which looks really classy in my opinion and on the back of the guitar you've got all of these little comfort calves and you've got this access heel which is um, wonderful for playing up on those higher frets and because it's an offset guitar I find this much like the Stratocaster feel um, that you can sit down put your leg up you can rest the guitar and it perfectly balances and then you can just go ahead and play some of your favorite tunes So moving into your questions, the first lot of questions that I saw was a lot of you were curious about the neck profile on this guitar. We've got a rosewood fretboard. The finger edges are a little rounded. They're comfortable in, enough in my opinion. Um, but the neck profile is the most important part here. We've got quite substantial shoulders, let's say, and kind of a flat back. So kind of like a D shape. If you've ever played like an Epiphone neck or a Gibson Slim Taper neck or the Epiphone Slim Taper neck, it's very similar to that. And um, it's not my favorite neck profile, to be honest, but but when I was learning these covert riffs this week and relearning some of them and learning some new ones, I noticed that the way Yvette plays, she has a thumb on the back of the neck a lot of the time. Now, now I can understand why it's quite flat at the back because it was ever so comfortable to play in that style when playing, you know, her riffs, her um, a finger gymnastics that she's doing across the fretboard there. The next set of questions that I saw that were quite interesting, a lot of you asked if this did come in FACG, FAC, FACGBE tuning. <laughs> Had to think about that for a second. So we've got one note difference from FACGCE tuning. And yes, it, it did come in that tuning, though it was relatively flat by the time it got here. And but of course, if you can change this to standard tuning, one thing I would say is this comes with 11 gauge strings. So if you're not familiar, if you're not really used to playing the thicker gauge strings, then you might want to switch down to some tens. But what I was thinking that when I got this guitar, but I've kept the 11s on because when I was playing, when I was learning these uh, riffs, if things were tuned down, if things were tuned slightly up, it just felt ever so comfortable when strings weren't flapping around and um, the tuning stability was just much better that way. So I can see now, because I used to 
wonder why somebody with smaller hands like myself would use 11 gauge strings on a guitar, but I think this guitar has answered that question for me. And of course, you can play it in standard tuning. You didn't think I'd let you get through a video about hearing incandescent ones, did you? <laughs> and we had a few questions just asking about the overall build quality. So I gave you some uh, overview in the introduction there, uh, but perhaps um, with my experience, you know, I, I have more expensive Fender guitars behind me. Um, so it's not really a fair comparison with that. So I'd probably compare this more to the um, Player Plus series, let's say, by Fender. So, you know, that with that series, you've got, you know, locking tuners, you've got those kind of upgraded pickups in there as well. I've not played one of those models. I have played a lot of the original Mexican series stuff, and I'd say it's pretty much on par with that. Okay, so let's move on to a final round of questions. And I just want to remind you, have you worked out what it is that I don't like about this guitar? Um, as much as I've bigged it up, there is one thing that I really don't like. And I'll let you know after this round of questions. And please let me know if you guess correctly down below in the comments. Thank you. Artem asked, how sparkly is this guitar? Do the sparkle sparkle more in real life? Um, I would say they do, that's for sure. It seems like there's a couple of layers of paint going on here. So we've got some kind of undercoat, there's some bigger flakes, and then on top of that, it just looks like a um, you know, like uniform kind of glitter pattern. It's, it's ever so wonderful. I got a, a lot of questions to compare this with a Telecaster. So I'm gonna compare it with my American original Telecaster. Do keep in mind that there's you know a lot of different factors going on here, but what I'll try and do is keep it as even as possible. I'll use the same amp settings, uh, same pedal settings, let's say, and I'll try and keep them at the same volume so there's no noticeable volume difference. And hopefully what you really hear is the pickup differences between these two. But like I said, there's a lot more nuances to it than there's just that. <laughs> So there's a few questions for how does this guitar taste? And I was curious myself about not how it tastes, but what this color is. It says orange cream sparkle. If you're from England, we have these chocolates called uh, roses that you get around Christmas time. And this is an orange cream, um, tangy orange cream one. And if you put it against the guitar, um, you can see it's exactly the same color. It's like they took this color, then they put um, a load of um, glitter over the top of it. So if I had to say what it would taste like, I imagine it would taste like one of these. So for the big reveal, did you guess what I didn't like about this guitar? Well, I didn't like the neck tint on this guitar. I know it might sound petty, but um, when you see this in real life and when you compare it, as you can see with the guitars in the background, look how yellow <laughs> this neck is. It looks like curry powder yellow, which is not what you really want on a classy looking instrument. It does gel well with the body color, to be honest, when you compare the two, but when you look at it in isolation, I am being quite pe petty here and picky, I know that. Um, but for me, it's a really big off put with this guitar. I hope they would change the tint just to be slightly more of an amber color or maybe just a more natural maple color. But I'm not working at Ivaness. I'll shut up, but <laughs> would it stop me buying it? No, I'd still buy this guitar. Um, I've had a wonderful time. It's got my favorite pickup configuration. It's a Telecaster that is comfortable to play so, and it's nice and light. So what's not to love there? So I hope you enjoyed this journey with me. Thank you very much for all your messages and thank you very much to Ibanez sending out the guitar. If you'd like to see more guitars on the channel, I wanna keep it kind of math rock related. So if there's any models that you would like to see from Ibanez or any other companies, I'll try and reach out and see if we can get any more of those on the channel. Thanks for watching, thanks to the patrons, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Thank you.